also in the conversation to go all the way, Gav? Well, honestly, I look at this and I say, why not? I mean, I, I think, I've said this before, uh, not rocket science, Manchester City are the best team in the competition. Um, other than that, I think there's four or five teams that are that are comparable. Um, and, you know, if at this, again, at this stage, make <laughs> the point after Bayern went through, at this stage last year, if I told you that, hey, look, Inter are going to be in the final, you know, you would have laughed so hard you would have fallen off your chair. Uh, Arsenal are a much, much better side. And, you know, looking at these odds, this seems reasonable. I might have Real Madrid uh, ahead of them because I do think experience is a thing. And um, but but to be honest, I think they're in that group with 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 those four sides you see on the left hand side, and 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 Barcelona and and, and probably Paris Saint Germain as well. Of course, I big don't names. see why not. Yeah. Big names, aren't they? But not big performances. No, and, and look, things may change in the coming weeks. But we saw City at the weekend being rattled by. A changed Liverpool side, mm. certainly not a full-strength Liverpool side, and, and they were, you know, at times hanging on and they were rattled, and, and you, you can get at them. And the same with Bayern Munich, they won 8-1 at the weekend against Mainz, but we know they haven't been playing great this season. We know Real Madrid are getting results in the top of La Liga, but a lot of games have been a struggle. Now, they, they can turn it on in a heartbeat, Real Madrid, uh, and Inter are strong, but they've got this oh. huge game against Atleti tomorrow, which is close. It wasn't close in the first leg. It was close in, in terms of the result. It wasn't close in terms of the performance. It should have been dead and buried, but it's not, and that leaves it open to Atleti uh, coming back in. But if you were Arsenal, nobody's going to stand up and say, OK, here it is. Yeah. But looking at the other teams, if Arsenal play at the top of their game, they're going to be at least extremely competitive against those sides, as Gab said, on that sort of favourite side of the list. So they should not fear anybody. The common factor between those teams that you just mentioned is these are teams that will attack Arsenal, that are expected to carry the game, to carry the responsibility of the game. And I think that suits Arsenal a little bit better than playing against a team like Porto that sort of fell into the trap of, of slowing down the game. If you get in a back and forth with Real Madrid, yeah, you're going to take some chances because Vinny Jr. will go on the counter and can hurt you. But guess what? You can hurt their back line too yeah. because Real Madrid is willing to come in number four. And the same thing with Manchester City and the same thing certainly with Bayern Munich who struggle in transition moments right. defensively. And so I think those are matchups that I wouldn't say favor Arsenal, but you can see a pathway by which Arsenal can take advantage of some of the frailties defensively of some of these big teams. I think they'd be uncomfortable playing against a team like Atletico Madrid, for yes. example. I, 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 that's the sort of challenge that it would be harder for them to figure out than the straight-up matchup against a team that they're very familiar with, like Manchester City. Go on, Gab. No, I just want to say, I think one of the keys between now and the end of the season, if, if Arsenal are going to win it, is assuming they stay in this three-way title race, I think he's got to get more out of his bench. Obviously, some of his injured players, uh, like, like Thomas Partey, for example, uh, are back. Uh, Gabriel Jesus recently returned um, because it does put a tremendous onus on you. And injuries do happen. We saw what Saliba's injury did to them uh, last season. You know, he's found a comfortable lineup that's yielding results, but those guys aren't always going to be there. So I think it's going to be critical that, that he weaves his players in, he can get some rotation in there, and he gives himself some more options between now and the end of the campaign.